Cornelius Bennett, actually was at Thurman's wedding, uh, approached me and said, I'd love to do a TV show. And at the time I said, well, you know, we've already got two shows and a general manager show and coach's show, so we're kind of showed out. But uh, when Thurman decided not to do it, he was the first logical choice to go to. With a new host came a new concept for the show. The structure of player guests and live audience participation were kept in, but the final segment of the show took a new and tasty twist. Today we're coming to you from Shepherd's Restaurant out in Williamsville, and today's um, chef is Craig Brown. Um, this is one of my favorite restaurants also. Um, I have a lot of favorite restaurants, as you can tell by now. But uh, We did a cooking segment with Cornelius. He loved to cook, so that was a new twist, something that we were never, never able to do with Thurman. And so we would tape a couple cooking segments in one night and then use them for, you know, like two or three shows down the road. Every restaurant that we went to cook at was totally Cornelius's idea. It was a restaurant that he had eaten at that he had enjoyed or perhaps heard something good about. And from there I would contact the restaurant and speak to the head chef, explain the premise of the segment and that we wanted to come in there and that it was imperative that Cornelius be involved in cooking the dish. One of the top defenders in the league, Bennett's play commanded the respect of the other players on the field and it carried off the field as well. Bennett had no trouble finding top guests and enjoyed doing it. We also had a, a segment where a player would come on and because Cornelius was one of the leaders of the team, we had all the big guns on. Bruce, Thurman, Jim Kelly, Andre Reed. Cornelius was very hungry to do that show, so it was extremely cooperative. Um, no attitude with us whatsoever. Whatever we want to do, wherever we went, uh, sign autographs. He uh, was just a prince, which is why when he had some problems off the field uh, a couple years later, was in our minds kind of out of character because he was just the easiest guy in the world for us to work with. With the success of the player's show format, Empire started a second venture with the Bills' second string quarterback in the fall of 1993. One of the most beloved bench warmers in the history of Buffalo sports, Frank Reich's amazing playoff comeback versus Houston endeared him in the hearts of Buffalo fans, so much so that the network asked him to host his own show. His show really drew some big crowds. I remember the first show we did was at a media play, and uh, Greg Brown was the host of the show the first year, and uh, the place was just packed. And, uh, you know, the ladies couldn't get enough of Frank Reich. And the men admired Frank, too, because he was a man's man. And, you know, he just, everybody loved the guy. And um, which made for a pretty vanilla show. I mean, Frank wasn't going to trash talk anybody. I mean, you pretty much would have to tune in a Thurman show to kind of get some of the cutting humor. But Frank was just an extremely popular guy. People loved to show up where he was and get autographs. I think that Frank Reich was kind of a living legend here in Buffalo. People from this area, I think, can identify with somebody who's second string quarterback, comes in and makes these big plays, saves a couple of games has a comeback game, and aside from that, is truly the salt of the earth. One of the nicest people you will ever meet. To help Frank host the show, Empire brought in the Bills color analyst who called the Houston comeback. Greg Brown became the first of two co-hosts to share the stage with Frank, a task he remembers fondly. It was an absolute joy uh, because I really felt like uh, the, the more we worked on the show, the, the closer we became as friends. Um, he became much more relaxed. He, he made me very at ease on the program, and uh, I rooted for him week in, week out. I didn't root for Jim Kelly to get hurt, but uh, like so many fans, I rooted for, uh, for Frank Reich. Brown's tenure with this show would only last one season as he was offered and took a position calling Pittsburgh Pirates baseball games with Fox Sports Network. To replace him, Empire brought in then Buffalo Bisons broadcaster Pete Weber. How did I get involved with the show? Well, number one, Greg Brown, who was the show's host its first year, went off to Pittsburgh to join the Pirates, so it was simply a case of me being drafted. I was the best athlete available at the time. With both hosts, Frank wanted to serve as a co-host. He wanted to lead into segments. He wanted to close out segments. He, he wanted to, to be an equal to whomever was there. The popularity of Reich in the public was equaled in the locker room as Reich's show brought out the biggest names on the team. Frank would come to me the day before we were taping the show and said, you know, how, how would you like to get Thurman Thomas or, uh, or Jim Kelly or, or Bruce Smith? I'd say, sure, and he'd say, well, I'll ask them. I didn't even have to ask these guys. And, of course, when Frank asked any one of these players, they were there week in and week out. In all three cases, the player's show produced in Empire's past lent a note of credibility while teaching the network how to deal with the athletes that local fans call their heroes. That kind of forced 
the bills to deal with Empire, which at the time was just a fledgling cable channel, and it kind of reintroduced them or introduced them to us and uh, forced them to start to watch us and, uh, you know, kind of oblige us and, you know, went on to the relationship just grew from there. And it was certainly a privilege to be able to get to know all three of those players. Um, they played on the Bills team at a time when they were the best. And uh, they were all very, very enjoyable to work with. Great personalities, uh, accommodating, and uh, professional.